I'm not going to cuss this whole show because my dad's coming in. Okay. You, th you think I can do it? No. Okay, we'll see. What do I get if I don't cuss? Anything you fucking want. Oh! Oh, oh. Real estate agents cuss too. Let's boogie. All right, so this is episode 16 of the Green Light Pod. I am Chris. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. I'm Macon. And you are welcome on this pod, always. Appreciate you. Terrific co-host. Big guest coming up, too. Big guest on the pod today, uh, related to me, um, has a flat top. Hall of Famer. Uh, that should narrow it down. Yeah. Everybody else related to me is either, yeah, there's no other Hall of Famers related to me. That kind of that kind of narrows it down. Howie Long will be joining us today. Nice. Um, I watched The Irishman the other night, a little bit of it, but you have to watch it in chunks though. We were talking about it. You didn't tell me anything, but you told me you've seen it. I have, I think the run time is 329. How much did you get through? About 38, Oof. I think. Well, I was I watch stuff at night as I'm falling asleep. So for me, you know, I'll watch the the Irishman at um like 11:30 p.m. Forget I watched it until like the next day at 6 p.m. And then it hits me that uh, De Niro looks like Brian Cranston with the filter on, kind of. Hmm. What did you think about the filter thing? I thought it was. Okay, not, yeah. not good, not great. Could have just done the face app. Right. They say it costed over a hundred million to get that done. And the worst part is, and by the way, I really like it so far. No spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers, it, it's got all the feels of an old Scorsese mob type movie, which I love and he has so many. We can, we can rank his movies. And by the way, he says it's probably his last picture. Um, we can rank those on another day. I mean, some favorites of mine are Casino and, Casino and Goodfellas easily. I also wonder if Scorsese's ever killed a guy, like mob style, because every movie, you know, they just have that gritty mobster vibe. Um, but the fight scene is what got me. You know, I, I couldn't get over the fact that these guys, you can change their faces to make them look younger, but they still look old as fuck when they move her off. Oh. Oh, there you go. You lose the prize. I'm sorry. You get nothing. They look old when they move around. This is the guy at the corner store. The guy at the corner store, probably to say the least, he shouldn't have touched his daughter. Yeah. This take is about uh, six weeks old at this point, whenever the Irishman came out. It is. Yeah, De Niro looks a little rickety. He's like, yep. Gonna do a, gonna do a ambush thing here at the deli. Like, yeah. It, it just looked like one of those dreams like that you can't do you ever have a dream where you can't like you can't land your punches yep i don't yeah. even, i don't play golf i have one where i can't i i can't put the ball on the tee like the tee is in there but it keeps falling off for about four hours of my rim i've never had that one i usually have the slow punches though mm. like just you know um i also there's a, a netflix thing called don't now that I've cussed, don't fuck with cats. I saw that. Mm. People, TJ Lang, one of the old old guy I played with, uh, offensive guard, really good player. He's got a nice Twitter, and uh, he he he's given a good reviews. I've heard really good things about it. Uh, it's not about cats at all. Well, it is about cats, but it's not. I don't no spoilers, but evidently it seems it 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 starts with a YouTube video that involves animal cruelty and then turns into something way more sinister. So I've been. I have been suggested to go watch that. We have to do your weight, by the way, because I did fire off a tweet. The big mystery for me and for the listeners here that this slender dude, um, Macon, who's how tall? 6'4". With hair. Yep. With for, hair, 6'4". For now. Um, so 6'4", I do think and you, you famously think you're taller than me. I am taller Infamously. than you. We, we can do that another time. Yeah, we'll do that another time. Uh, the weight is in question because you are more slender. 
And uh, I know it's in the hundreds, right? Don't yeah. don't tell me yet. That's right. Um, can I read you some guesses? I asked sure. the I asked the listeners how much you weigh. I'll also say that I like to get in the gym, as you know. Uh, you do. I've seen you in the gym, and I haven't been able to recently because of a a bicep deal uh, for about six months. And then I had a GI deal, as the listeners are aware. <laughs> it's hard to follow the bicep deal with the GI deal. I'm just saying, not a lot of, of weight being put on these days. It's a lot to overcome. Mm -hmm. If you were a football team, you would be, I don't know which one, but it would probably be one that lost a bunch of starters on IR. Um, yeah, you've had a Jacksonville-like run of luck. Yep. Um, Coughlin included. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm thinking about who's the, who's who's had the worst luck in the game this year. Here are the guesses um, on your weight, and they range from 163 to 187.7 to 161.9. Let's see if anybody guessed over 200 pounds. Let's just somebody said 14 stone. Um, I think a stone is 14 pounds. So 14 times 14 is what? A number. Yeah, it's like 100. Sure. And it, uh, 196. Uh, it's 140 plus. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Uh, no, 14, 14 times 14, and this is fucked up to have to do math on the show, but one, 14 times 10 is 140, plus 4 times 14 is 56. So yeah, 196, you got it correct. Thanks, about um, 30 seconds ago or so. Yeah, well, you had a calculator. No, I didn't. Con. Uh, Ch Don Chip Reederson guessed 169 even, and, uh... Thank you for the donation to Waterboys early, Don. Earlier, Don. Um, yeah, nobody guessed over. Oh, somebody said one ninety two. No fucking way, Seamus. Seamus. Somebody said one sixty one comma seventy six. Might be a European. Why don't listener. you? Yeah. Why, why don't you just fire off the result here? Because I got you to get on a digital scale, and I haven't heard this. Can I do my guess? Yes, please. One sixty seven point three. Okay. Do we have it? Do we have the... Uh... Somebody said 208.5. Frank Carbone is drunk on the internet. That would have been right in the year 2008. Ooh, can we, final year can, we pull that, can we pull yeah. that picture at some I point? I don't know. Uh, Looks like you got stung by a bunch of bees. The correct answer is, drum roll. Yeah. One, seven, oh. two, Whoa. Point four. So we're going to find 172.4 pounds of skin and bones and some muscle. Yeah. Not as much muscle as you know, as usually you've had, as you mentioned, a, a GI issue and a biceps issue. Right. What would I like to be? Yeah. What's, what's your target weight? 180. To survive. Okay. 180. We'll what get... would I really like to be? Yeah. 190. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> But I don't know if that's realistic. <laughs> that'd be pretty dope. Uh, that'd be, uh, that'd be, let's get there. What do you weigh? Me? About 250. A cool 250. Pain-free 250. Feel like I can jump up on the tailgate of a pickup truck, jump down off it even more importantly. Uh, that kind of weightlessness. At what weight did you last play? 262. Okay. But some games I was down at 258, you know? Yep. If, if if I was, uh, you know, I, I tend to lose a lot of weight late in the year. Um, so we're going to owe somebody a prize. A prize. We don't know what closest. it is. Let's think about it. Yeah. What could it be? Could it be your bobblehead? Nah. Something, though. We'll, we'll offer up a prop. Um, real quick rundown on the music. Um, check out King Curtis's Something on Your Mind live at Small's Paradise, which I sent to you this week. Yeah, I didn't click it. What the fuck? Well, you send me lots of things throughout the day. Yeah, you're a terrible texture. The enthusiasm I, with I, you, it makes me wonder, do you, anybody have a friend that you text and you're just like, this guy doesn't really actually like me? Well, you text a lot, and half the time I don't know what the things mean. And New Year's so resolution, I, I just keep it moving. better grammar, more cohesive clarity. clarity. But there, there's no clarity or context needed. I think we're doing this thing every Friday where I mention some songs and we're trying to expand your musical catalog. So check it out sometime. The entire album's awesome. King Curtis, never really heard of him. Well, I heard of him, but I never really actually like listened to his stuff. And I'm really into the sax lately. Hmm. Makes me feel real grown up. 
as I do grown up things. You should learn it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, also, uh, check out Voices Inside My Head by The Police, one of their most underrated songs. Been spinning that on the old Spotify like a champ all week long. I want to shout out my bro, Pat Hallahan, drummer, My Morning Jacket, tremendous band. Sometimes he'll send me cool songs. It's Late by Queen off of News of the World. He sent me that one this week as a hidden gem. Uh, and it has been in rotation all week. Also, I'm getting into Pete Molinari. Is anybody behind the, do you guys know that one? Did I say that correctly? Guy sounds like uh, Bob Dylan in The Voice. Uh, check out his Billy Childish cover. Um, I don't know, how, what, what the fuck is the cover? He cussed again. Golly. And it looks like my most played tune this week was Thank God for You by Sawyer Brown. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know that one. Uh, Something for you to check out. Okay, I'm going to check it out. Will you text it to me? Yeah, dog. Uh, this is uh, Pete's doing the, the cover of I Don't Like the Man I Am, which you might know. Um, and I did not know who performed that song initially. So we are going to have my dad coming up in a little bit. My dad... Howie Long. Yeah, I know him. Great interview, I think it's going to be. Um, good storyteller. Uh, I tried to recount a couple quick stories about me and my dad when I was a kid. One would be we went to what they called Indian Scouts back in the day, in the 80s. When we lived in Cali, when I was a little kid, like five years old, my dad was trying to do things with me, you know, father son things. So we joined Indian Scouts. My dad, about 280 pounds of muscle, huddled around a campfire with a bunch of probably tech bros. Um, maybe not then. Maybe not then. It wasn't tech bros, but the equivalent of tech bros. Budding tech bros. Budding future tech bros. People that would give birth to tech bros yeah. of the new millennium. Um, he took me to, there was this field trip on Catalina Island. Catalina Wine Mixer. Right. Uh where we had to kind of go sleep in these cabins, which my dad's from Charlestown. He's not, he's a city kid. And uh, this was out of, outside of his comfort zone. What was also outside of his comfort zone was the boat ride over to Catalina, which got very sketchy and very, a lot of people sick, vomit everywhere. I puked all over my dad. Mm. Uh, and then he stuck it out that weekend um, with a total brat of a five-year-old on Catalina Island in a little log cabin. Um, and that was my dad. Like my dad, you know, I'll talk about it in the interview today, always put in the extra time, made the extra effort to be just my dad, you know, in the midst of a Hall of Fame career, doing stuff like that, normal stuff. I'm sure the last thing he wanted to do was talk to all those people about football that he had to go on the Indian Scouts retreat with, but he did it. For me, um, and it inspires me. Uh, that's just one story that that sticks out of my mind to be a good dad now because he was really good dad, um, and still is. He's my buddy now. And how did I repay him? I remember this story when I was a kid. Um, they asked me in in like second grade to draw a picture of my home life, and I just drew a picture of my dad on the couch in a eight in an A shirt covered in beer cans. <laughs> now the moral of the story is my dad doesn't drink alcohol. So I totally made this up. I guess I had probably watched uh, Al Bundy on TV. I don't know if this time's up. And I just projected that onto my dad. Like this is what he does. He just sits around and drinks beer. Uh, but let's, ha let's, let's have Howie up. He's gonna take your chair, if that's okay with you. That's fine. Um, and we'll probably do a snippet because I wanna have him on longer. Let's have him on. We'll break off the interview as a standalone because I want him in here for about 45 minutes. He's got to earn his money's worth. Um, and then we'll do gift exchange. And then we'll do gift exchange. What? Sounds, well, the show right before the holidays, I figure we do gift exchange. Yeah, but you don't have to like flex on me in front of our entire listenership. Like I haven't gotten you anything. No, I did get you something. Perfect. Okay. Fuck, I got somebody else something that's over in the corner and I'm gonna act like I gave it to Macon and hopefully make oh no, he's got the headphones on, he can hear me. Here's Howie Long. So welcoming to the Green Light Studios, a good buddy of mine. Technically he's my dad. He's also a friend, Hall of Famer, eighty three. 
three career sacks. Oh, they didn't count sacks my rookie year. So you year. had well, you had five your rookie year. I looked it up. You had no, yeah. I think it was six. Oh, okay. So you had about I don't know. 89, 90. Yeah. So congratulations yeah. on my retirement. I was coming for you. Ah. I just want to get that off the bat. Hey. About five more years. <laughs> so, uh, hey, and also, I mean, like, for a guy that grounded me for six months at one point, I just want to welcome you to our, our studio, how the tables have turned. Uncle Billy grounded me for life one time. Mike came by the house and he what did grounded. What did you do? I don't know. I Believe it or not, when I was in high school, how tough Uncle Billy was. <laughs> Uncle Billy was tough. He's a lot warmer and fuzzier now. When I lived with him for three years, um, I couldn't go out during the week. I was 6'5", 220-pound senior, couldn't go out during the week and had to be home at 9 p.m. flat. Yeah. Or if you were 901. Tom Coughlin time? Nine, yes, he was 85. Tom Coughlin. He was Tom Coughlin early. He was way early than Tom Coughlin. So you had it easy. Yeah, I know I did. I, I, well, I, I deserved it a few of the times. but You sure did. But welcome to the studio. And by Thank the way, you. this guy's just giving me shit since he sat down. He said, is it, is it okay to have a dead raccoon behind you? I said, well, well I want to know, do you validate? Because I walked about, a, I'm winded, yeah, walk about a mile down from the parking lot. We can improve the parking situation. And then I situation. saw the raccoon and the squirrel. But for the record, I will say this, for all the dead raccoons nice out Super there. Nice Super Bowl trophies back yeah, there. Yeah, Super Bowl yeah. trophies are nice. Uh, for all the de dead raccoons out in the world, like this one has a pretty good. You know, the other ones, they're just on the side of the road somewhere. This guy's on a big time live stream podcast. We're streaming this podcast live across the country right now as we speak. So I don't know what foundation. You that was know, a joke. I wanted to see if you squirmed because I, it's live TV. I know you don't do a lot of live TV. I don't TV. know what I do a lot of live TV. I, I don't <laughs> know what foundation or what group, you know, monitors these kinds of atrocities. The FCC. Yeah. FCC. They'll be on you in a heartbeat. FCCC. It's a, there's a, a third C. These yeah. are way more important than, you know, some of the stuff you do on Sunday. It's great. A lot of people What's watching. What's that an acronym for? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, the reason we're bringing you on, this is a segment called Hey Dad, because if you didn't know already, this is going to be a recurring segment, so you're contractually obliged. <laughs> What's the budget here? <laughs> also, I, I do the budget here. $8 million a week. Also, I want, I, I want to shout you out as not only a Hall of Fame football player, but a great babysitter. Oh God, I love those kids. Yeah, he's he. They are. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, they. It's uh, you got to get through your own kids to get to those kids. Yeah, I'm working on that. So uh, no, I mean they they are Waylon and Luke are. We we just have we we have so much fun and and you know the nice thing for us is. We we have a a relatively big house for that circa of house you know it was built in 1846 and when we first bought it it was in total disrepair and we didn't have a kitchen we had one bathroom <clears throat> and you guys were nine five and four and it was kind of an adventure so it was nice um yeah. but here we were fast forward to you're 34 years old yeah. uh kyle's 30 going on 31 here and you know and how he's fast approaching uh, the 30 number here. But he's got the wisdom of a 50-year-old. Totally. <clears throat> yeah. He's like Yoda. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the house, here's here we were in this big house, and it's kind of empty. Yeah. And, you know, there are rooms that I don't go in or would not go in for 10 years. There's rooms I haven't been in. Right. Ever. You know, Diane, your mom said, you know, that room down the end of the hall needs to be painted. I said, Why? <laughs> We haven't been in that room in 20 years. <laughs> but now with Luke and Waylon, the house is oh, full. Oh, you use the, the whole thing. The house is full and again. You throw your Fitbit on for that for that uh, exercise, watching them, because you, you probably cover a couple miles a day. Oh, and, and it's great. Yeah. They are great, and it's a ball, and you're watching things and doing things that, you know, the technology is so much better now than when we brought you guys up. It was yeah. pretty primitive. Throw something in the back seat and hope that you don't kill one another. Well, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, how many stitches combined? Well, I didn't realize this, but until I went to when Kyle took a line drive at a 
he was eight years old at one of your practices at Darden Tau. Yeah, it wasn't a live drive, a line drive. It was a pop fly. Whatever, pop yeah, fly, yeah, line yeah. drive. It was batting faster practice. than a. Uh, it was a, a it was, towering. It was batting. Shot. It was batting practice, and in batting practice for those of you who don't know, in little league, there's about ten kids out in the outfield, and it's oh I got it, no I don't got it, and one kid puts his glove down, and it's Kyle. Well, we go to the emergency room and and come to realize that, you know, I'm starting to kind of figure out the questions the woman at the computer is asking me are leading towards, you you know, do you feel like, you know, do you feel like you're in peril at home? You know, those kind of questions. And I figured it out that if you're in there a certain number of times, you know, there's a there's a red light that goes. Yeah, it's called it's called a watch list. They yeah. have them for all well, types of we things. Well, we were on the watch list for sure. Yeah, I mean, we had stitches and thirty you know. thirty six for Kyle. I accidentally hit him with the bat. Oh, that was a bad that was a rough day. one. We don't need to go into details, but that was an accident. In, I was covered in blood. And then and then Howie hit Kyle, or Kyle hit Howie with a picture frame. Uh, Howie always went with the foreign object. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it well, was a size it, thing. When Kyle, you know, Kyle. he was like, he was like Toro Tanaka. He pulled the, out of the salt, salt out of the belt, and you know, throw it in your eyes and then whack you. Yeah, you know. Exactly. But I mean, when you're dealing with Kyle, poor Howie, you like know, like hunting I mean, a bear. I'm hiding behind the door with a bat too. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt about it. Um, yeah. So you know, fast forwarding to the to, the reason I brought you on wasn't to to, to recount how fucking insane our childhood was. you could get two shows out of this you could uh yeah. but it, it was mainly to talk about the raiders and the last game at the coliseum obviously yeah. you when you read about the raiders and this is something for me that i lose you know because for when i was a kid you were just my dad you guys did a good job of driving that home we tried to you tried to and you did and so for me i can remember like when you played in that afc championship game against buffalo I had really half a one eye on the game. I was playing Sega Genesis. Like, sure. And that, that's how it can backfire. If you convince your kid that your dad's regular, I treat my dad on TV like it's regular. Um, well, for I, I think for you guys, it was regular. Yeah. And, yeah, and we yeah. didn't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you're in our house <clears throat> up until, you know, X number of years ago, we had all this stuff stored in closets. And your mom actually was you know, the nexus for, you know, hey, we need to take this stuff out and put it up. Exactly. And we turned the gym. I said, that's fine. I don't want it even in the house. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to walk in the house and look at myself. I don't want to look at jerseys. I don't want to look I at... I don't either. But, but down in the gym, it turned out to be a, a nice thing, and, and it spilled over into your careers. So that was Howie Long. You want to check that one out. A lot of great stories. He's from, a good guy. He is a good good guy. Oh, gift exchange. Can you grab me, uh, Cowboy Reed, that gift over there in the yellow uh, thing there? It was for somebody else, but I guess I'll get... Aha. Uh-huh. But it's not Christmas. I still have time. And also, we're going to hang out before and after Christmas. Yeah, but, you know... Oh, yeah, you got to... podcast Christmas. This, you know, if this isn't for me, I really don't need to No, it is it. for you. Okay. I wrap this myself. It's in newspaper... And it was a story about marijuana, which I thought was fitting. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, stigmatization. Should, yeah. What, should I really open this? Yeah, open it. You, I guess you could rewrap it, whoever it's intended for. No, you could just keep it. I got you an actual gift. Put thought into it. I got it. you an actual gift, too. Went to. You also didn't warn me, stuff. which, by the way, oh, this is a cool-ass gift. Isn't that dude. a nice gift? Now I feel like an asshole. That's a candle that smells tremendous, by well, the way. Well, hold on. I love candles. Okay, good. <laughs> and it does smell tremendous. It's going to smell just as good in your house as, as it, it would have in whoever's house it was supposed to be for. Now, now there's, gonna... there's a picture behind that picture. Oh. That's your face. Okay. But I know how much you're infatuated with your own calf muscles, and that's a good calf muscle picture. Well, you got to have something. I don't really have any pecs. So and... for the people there... Uh, watching on TV, this is when I retired. Uh, I was kind of scared to retire, so I had like 15 people over. Because once you invite people over for a retirement party, you can't not retire. Right. Um, and, and we got some balloons and let them off. And so I apologize because I heard that's bad to do. You would have let them off, but you knew it was bad for the environment, so we... Yeah, we pulled it back in. Yeah. Um, because Jim Ryan from UVA who hopefully we'll have on the show soon. Future guest, yep. He warned people about graduation and not letting them off. 
so the whole idea was we had all these beautiful balloons and you know one for every year of your career you're right eight and i got them eight in um eight in uh in, st louis in, dog no eight in gold for right. st louis uh we had two in green for the eagles and one for the pats in red and uh they kept popping the whole way up mm -hmm. and it was always the gold ones that was popping yeah um uh, so yeah this is a really nice gift thank you make you're welcome and that's a candle thanks it it's does a it's terrific smell, candle good yeah okay i'm gonna put this up here let's do football let's do football let's uh well let's do mailbag first huh okay you want to take uh oh yeah i put the list up on our big board sure did zach yeah. jones asks where do you prefer to nap couch recliner bed bed is dangerous zach i have never n not napped in a bed yeah about how about you bed all my naps have to be at least an hour and a half oh that's not smart yeah back in the day they had to be at least three hours yeah and i don't do them after noon if i do them after noon they got to be about an hour yeah. Or I got to have a hangover. And actually, somebody phoned in and asked about hangover cures, not to pull from another question. The best cure for a hangover is a coconut water before bed, and then a bunch of water the next day, and definitely a nap. You get a nap, it almost resets your system. I know you don't get hangovers. And your nap should be more like 30 minutes. No, nah, I don't do NASA naps. It takes me at least, I have a whole routine. Clips sponsored by Bumble asks... How can I get not addicted to caffeine? Decaf life seems unreasonable. Start looking at caffeine as an illicit drug because that's what it is. Mm. Caffeine is the devil, especially for somebody with anxiety. Caffeine is like steroids for your anxiety. I will literally start to think people are plotting on me around me. Like I turn into some disillusioned like person on caffeine are you paranoid paranoid could be the weed not the weed the weed makes me happy 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 shout joy, out joy. to mud house my espresso my go juice you should let me take it away from it's the downtown poison. location uh but it's all poison that can be rectified shout out bel air mud house that does let me take away my my espresso matt Curtin asks what are your top five hats Rasulo uh, said your hat game was strong. Top five hats. NASA has That's crept a into the top five. I have a, a Navy NASA for occasions where I can't wear a black hat. Uh, lately, these Butte brand ball caps are really nice. Usually Carhartt. Carhartt has been a staple, but it sits a little low on your dome. I like a full-bodied hat. Um, this is a shape that I prefer. Here, I got to take off my headphones so you can, you know? Yeah. You like this one? You love that Coops hat. Shout out to Coops. Um, hats you can't do anymore unless it's a beach vacation. We talked about on the, this on Rosilla. You can't really do the fedora anymore unless you're at a concert or the beach. Okay, beach. I did fedora recently. I did fedora at your retirement party, and it worked. You know, it worked out fine. It was a summer, but there's certain fedoras that don't work, and we both know what they look like when you see them. You definitely can't pull the Dick Tracy hats off. I tried to do that with suits back in the day. Ill-fitting suits on my first contract. Very ill-fitting suits. Dick Tracy hat. Not a good look. Just don't do it. Um, ooh. Nah. I mean. Somebody asked about making. I mean, somebody sent in a question. Do you want to just at least pose the question? Dave Stipe asks, um, will I explain the nickname The Squid? That's your nickname for people listening. And I will not. Byron asks, since I'm sure you're tired of being asked if you'd come back to play another season, how about instead some alternative careers? Uh, well, I'm not tired of ask, being asked about if I'd come back and play next season because the salary cap, I think, is going to go up. Yeah. And, well, yeah. What's well, good, Philly? We might have a, a, a same gift exchange next year when you retire again. Yeah, that'd be cool. Man, more balloons and more expensive balloons. Right. Uh, I, I would say um, they asked, what did they ask? Uh, Another career. Oh. You're in Well, you're they said, which, which action movie franchise would you most like to become a part of? A First Blood reboot? A Predator reboot? Yeah. I mean, it's not that, I mean. I don't like stuff that isn't real. Yeah. Brad Muller asks. The Muller Report. 
Assuming the Rams didn't draft you at two, which other top 10 team that year could you have seen yourself enjoying slash being successful with at that time? That's one of the things I always wonder the most because as much as I love playing in St. Louis and the fans, the fans would have traded the team's performance. I mean, it wasn't the best thing for my career to end up somewhere that was gonna be perpetually really bad. Um, I would have really enjoyed playing in Kansas City. Okay, so at one, they went Jake Long. At two, they went me. Three, they went Matt Ryan. They would have liked to have gone Matt Ryan. At two, wouldn't they have? I still think Matt Ryan's career would have been race, wasted in St. Louis. I happen to think Sam Bradford's a great quarterback. I'm, no, that's what, no mm, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Even Sam's career got wasted. Mm. You're on this new, like, Chris doesn't like to offend people thing, but it's funny because every time we talk about something with UVA, you bitch up. Oh, I don't really even know what bitch up means, though. I guess I can, I can guess as to what that means. It means like when I say like, do you like the tie thing at UVA? I do. You said privately you don't. That's not true. Con. Do you like it when UVA isn't sold out for tech week? No, I don't like it when we're not sold out. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would I would have liked to have been drafted by the Chiefs if not um, I think the Chiefs would have been fun although they were bad early great home field advantage crowd noise playing on playing on grass your entire career that extends your career um, yeah maybe the Chiefs the Pats were up there the Saints were up there Cedric Ellis Vernon Golston went to the Jets Derek Harvey to the Jags uh, keep it going Okay. We'll do top five Stone songs another day. Thanks, Zach. Uh, oh, favorite song to listen to. Sorry. Before a ball game. Death Row, Chris Stapleton, me and Fletcher Cox used to always huddle in the corner and listen to Death Row. And now every time I hear it, I want to run through a fucking wall and there are no walls in sight. Civilian life. Mine's Lose Yourself by Eminem for the major motion picture. I had heard you do that before. Eight Mile. Yeah. RWW25, last trip to Charlottesville three years ago included eating at Maya, excellent, no joke, best yeah. restaurant. And two trips to back, back to Bel Air Market was excellent in the mid 90s and was three years ago as well. If you and Making Gunner can offer a new place or two to eat next time, I'd appreciate it. What do you got? Golly, uh, on the Bel Air <clears throat> train of thought, Ivy Provisions, lovely sandwich spot. Very lovely. Um, oh, the breakfast sandwich, uh, Sloppy Jose. Snag that one, you go over there. If we're coming back down this way, uh, Bizu. Oh yeah, Bizu. Big favorite of mine. I love Bizu. Lampo, Prime 109. Shout out to Lauren. Fitzroy. Yep. Orzo. Just, just gonna keep going? Yeah. You don't wanna- We got a lot of great restaurants. You don't wanna offend any. Winslow asks, Indica or Sativa? I mean, Indica all, all day. I don't know what that means. I think we're good. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's go into football real quick. We're, we're doing what's called the shortest pod ever. Which is still going to be the longest pod <sighs> ever. This is me breathing, like listening to you. Do you think depression era podcast co-hosts complained as much as you? <laughs> Recording into a fucking empty can of soup and a string. Starving, hadn't eaten in days. No clothes. You're in corduroys in a warm studio. And I'm looking at how many notes you have on these games coming up this weekend, and I hope you're comfy. Watch how fast I'm going to be. Let's start with Tom Coughlin this week. Tom Coughlin, who was fired in Jacksonville, but somebody who got fired this, this late in his life with this legacy is almost unprecedented. The old Coughlin's back. When I interviewed Strahan, I was like, you know, how did you change him around in Giants days? Like, it was a tough task, and nobody down in Jacksonville has the gravitas to stand up to somebody like that. So hard to kick old habits, the fines, Fowler fines for treatment, 770 k We talk about getting treatment away from facilities. There's a reason guys want to do it, a la Trent Brown. Fournette sitting on the bench for 100 k That's a fine? Are you kidding me? While he's, while he's hurt, he, he, has to, he has to stand up. Nuts. Smoot, breakfast in London, 25 k Boye, yoga. Mandatory yoga, 10K. Is that the most ironic fucking thing in the world? Steve, or uh, Steve Coughlin, Stanford Steve. Tom Coughlin, hmm. all those years, probably never would have done yoga. He's finding people five figures for missing a mandatory yoga. That's how much football's changed and hasn't for Tom Coughlin. Um, 
he and here's the thing about the Jags. Easily could have waited till the end of the year, right? But the NFLPA was sending letters to players saying don't sign with Jacksonville. And that's the biggest issue here besides the win for the players. Jacksonville is a free agency destination, especially with Marone there as a no-go. And by the way, Marone, if he had anything to do with this shit, if I was a player, I wouldn't sign there either. Teams have been getting away with shit in the offseason for way too long. It's a no-fly zone for me. They're not even that good. Shad Khan, supposed to be progressive. Maybe a little less real estate, a little less London, more institutional control. You know, I played for Kraft and Lori late in my career, great owners. They were in the building enough without being meddling, and I know owners walk a fine line, right? Um, and I'm not saying Shad Khan's not a great owner, but you have to be able to answer to this stuff when it's on your watch. And they made the right move because they could have quietly let him resign. They did not wait to the end of the season. I don't think if the NFLPA pushed him, though, that they would have done the right thing. And that's what's fucked up about NFL teams. I also had Kroenke, who never even entered the building. Um, can coaches and executives change? I mean, Coughlin didn't deep down. I've had coaches like Spagnola, who was one guy as a head coach. He was brutal. But guys in New York said they loved him as a, as a coordinator. And by brutal, I mean, me and Spags are good buddies now. But he would run you into the ground, and he was tough. And they said he was a player's coach as a coordinator. So I think for some coaches and some executives, it depends on the position they're in, and some guys, they change over time. Um, and when you're in free agency, one of the first things you look at, especially as an aging player, is how hard is it there? It's not like you want to get out of work. I was one of the least lazy players I ever played with, but I don't want unnecessary bullshit. You were one of the least lazy players you ever played with? Yeah, if I was a teammate and I was looking at myself, I would think that guy's not lazy. So you, you're saying you, you, you played with yourself? You're tr I do. I did play with myself. Uh, so yeah, so for a team trying to justify its existence, uh, it's not a good look. Jacksonville's going to have a hard time. Let's do some previews real quick before we draft quarterbacks. Thanks. This pod is flying by. Thanks for the rings, Tom. Spags, too. Spags? The coordinator, New York Giants. Oh, I thought you were talking about, like, for me. Yeah, never mind. I thought you meant Tom Brady for me. Oh, Got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I actually have two Super Bowls here. Like, I have. Ah. Right? Not like, you know. So, Bills-Pats. Here's some games I want to see this week. Bills-Pats. I'm so excited about this game, man. This feels like a playoff game already. It's almost Christmas. I love, we talked about that when they showed the score with the Christmas lights. I don't know if they're, do they're doing that anymore. The last time this game was actually... Oh, yeah, they're doing that. Okay, good. The last time... And I love Saturday football, by the way. Where are you on that? Uh, yeah. Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. Pro. Pro. The la well, it's that or the, uh, the you know, Camellia Bowl. Right. Um, they're good the, games, too. They, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. They Well, they are on Saturday. There's three of them, I think. Uh, Bills, Pats. The last time this team played, both of them having 10 wins, 1960s. Pats are 36 and 5 at home in December since 01. This feels way different. And Brady's 15 and 1 against the Bills. Uh, his only loss came in a game he played in the first half against uh, the Bills. So, but this feels different. It feels different than the history. It feels different than the first time they matched up. The Bills are trending up. Josh Allen's taking care of the football. First matchup, he threw three picks, fumbled the ball, was knocked out of the game. Now he's got Devin Singletary. He's got uh, that Bengals outside run blueprint that we looked at last week. I mentioned the Pats since week eight have been awful against outside run. Um, and you've also got Baltimore tape. Josh Allen's big, athletic. You can do some of those same things. You can you can take from them. You've seen other teams take from that Baltimore tape. Uh, and the first time they played, the Pats needed a block punt for a touchdown to win that game. So um, it's it's a meaningful division game. What could you ask for more than this on a Saturday? This is not just about this game because the Bills probably not going to win the division. Nah. This is about the That's Bills. That's to lose to the Dolphins. Yeah. The Bills being the heir apparent in the AFC East, which you talked about, this is an accelerant for that. They go beat these guys. Well, here's the interesting thing. They beat these guys. It'll actually be warranted on Monday to come in and say the Pats are done. Hmm. Because that... They'll have to probably play two road games. And I'm not saying the Pats as a franchise necessarily are done or this run's done, but for the year, you have to figure a team that all they talk about is the second half of the season as being a new season. 
They're actually not trending up, they're doing the opposite, and usually they figure things out this time of year, and they are obsessed with home field advantage. So there's an X where there should be a check on uh, improvement, there's an X where there should be a check on home field advantage, and then if they lose to them, they're not dominating their division. So divisional games either. Um, my question will be is when these pundits get up and rightfully wonder if the Pats are done, because no team is immune to that, will Pats fans who probably booed them the night before say, you can't do that. You can't say the Pats are done, but we can boo, but you can't say the Pats are done. That makes no sense to me. We'll see how it plays out. I think the Bills play them close, uh, and, and they could be in for a, a big win that would accelerate their standing as the class of the AFC East. And I'm not saying they're better than the Pats. It's just the Pats are falling apart with injuries. The Pats, they, they've got attrition. Tom doesn't have anybody to throw to. I'm not shitting on the Pats. There's still a team that can make a run, but it's going to be hard. Rams, Niners, good news for the Rams. They held the Niners 2.4 carries or yards of carry last time they played. Lost in that, in that blowout. Um, but the bad news is the Rams can't run the ball right now. Todd Gurley, 11 for 20 uh, last week. The Rams' defense has been gashed twice in one month here, Baltimore and then Dallas. Here's the thing that worries me the most. Everybody's getting right against the Cowboys, right, except for the Rams. So I don't know what to think of that. Um, I think the biggest thing we talked about is tight windows for Jared Goff. When he has to throw in tight windows, which he had to do a season high 20% of the time, last week he struggled. I know the health is an issue, but Sean McVay, for all the the, the stones he's taken this year, um, he's led the league in keeping Mc, keeping Goff out of throwing in tight windows. Usually he throws in the tight windows about 11% of the time. And I think that's the game with Jared Goff. We talked about that. He has to, he can't throw people open. People got to be open. And San Francisco's coverage, although they've got some injuries, still pretty good. And the pass rush is cooling off for San Francisco. That's another thing. I talked about that earlier in the year. Really good group. D Ford leaves. Hey, Bosa's got to be DPOY. Listen, I love Nick Bosa. He's not a defensive player of the year. And a lot of their a lot of their their sacks were coming on longer clock throws. So it's gonna both teams are reeling in different ways. San Francisco losing to Atlanta. I'm not worried about them long term, but they're definitely injured, banged up, coming to the playoffs. You could be a one seed or you could be a five seed. We'll see what happens. New Orleans at Tennessee. It's, it's going to be interesting because last week was the surgical indoor breeze that makes you wonder if he's the GOAT if you just watch that game. Then you take his whole career into account. I believe he's fringe top five. I love him. But, you know, people's thing is, hey, outdoor Drew Brees. This week, outdoor, physical team, meaningful game, December. We'll see. Juxtaposed to last week. Uh, we'll see. Derrick Henry's the big question, though. Hamstrings are tricky because you're probably going to sit all week. You're not going to test it out a ton because you don't want to make it tighter or re-aggravate it. And then in the cold, you get out there. You don't really know. You're not sure. You don't want to open it up all the way. Hamstrings can feel weird. They can make you feel scared. You're going to pop it. Here's a kid who's essentially like, well, this is kind of a playoff game. Do I play? Do I push it? and risk not actually being in it for the real playoffs. And if they don't have Derrick Henry in the playoffs, if they get there, it's pointless for them to be there. Saints secondary, Eli Apple been picked on. Janoris Jenkins of your New York Giants formerly is going to make a difference. Will he make a difference on a short week? Look at the Warford injury as well. Te uh, Tex Apple too, former Giant. Apple, former Giant as well. Texans must win, uh, it feels like, but they could still lose if they beat Houston because they get Houston one more time. And Pittsburgh loses to either the Jets or the, the Ravens. The thing you have to watch for there is, are the Ravens going to be um, resting everybody in Week 17? So I suspect they might. Texans, um, or the uh, Titans, absolutely have to win. Texans have the Bucks on Saturday. Texans have the Bucks. Did I say Texans the whole time? Nope, just once. Okay. Um, Dallas, Philadelphia, I'm not going to spend too long on here at the risk of pissing off my co-host. Phew. Uh, but this is a game. This is the one game that makes me feel like getting off the couch. This is a playoff game in Philly. All things considered, this is a fucking playoff game. You just have to take a bunch of caffeine and hate somebody for 60 minutes. 60 fucking minutes. There's 65 Philadelphia folks, 1,000, cheering you on. How can you not get up for this? The defense has to play big, man. The, the pass rush has been, eh. Um, they've never beaten Zeke. Listen, the, the one time we beat the Cowboys when I was there, 
when we beat the Cowboys, Alfred Morris was the running back. Zeke was hurt. So this is a big thing they have to get. Uh, they have to shed that stigma. And Dallas has been dominant in division. The thing about Dallas is, the good news for the, for, for, for the Eagles is, you fade Dallas. Because if they play well, they're usually going to do this. And Dak's health is in question. But I said, the Eagles pass rush. We know Carson's throwing to nobody. Is Miles and Zach Ertz enough? Um, you got nobody to take the top off the defense. Things are going to be tight underneath. Lane Johnson's out, who had his worst game of the year against Dallas the first time. They could really use him, but he's got a high ankle. And high ankle sprains are really bad. It's the biggest misnomer in football. It's more like a break or a tear. And Lane Johnson, I know, would bust his ass to be out there. And, you know, until last time they played, he'd never give up, given up a sack to Demarcus Lawrence, amazingly, who's a great player. They really are going to miss him Sunday. My biggest worry is Lane Johnson and the defense in general because since that good run in November, they've given up 27 points per game against the teams, teams with 9 and 33 records combined. And they're missing Kamu, linebacker. So, um, you know, Nate Gary's going to have, big, have to have a big day in coverage. And uh, it's, it, to me, I've said this before, it's as much about how they play. Just go play your fucking ass off and compete. And I bet you whatever happens, I know people will laugh at me, Philly will at least respect this team. Um, and the way Carson finishes is just as important as the playoffs right now. I am going to give Giants uh, Washington some love. Eagles by a point just because of the situation. Let's go. Giants, Washington. Two big markets shoved down our throats. I am interested in the Danny Dimes Haskins thing um, if he plays. And if Eli plays, you also have Eli gunning for north of 500. So this, oh, Danny Dimes has been named just then. So we do get the uh, Danny Dimes Haskins Bowl, and Eli will fade away with a 500 record. 500. And both teams are three and eleven. Both teams are three and eleven, but it sure feels a little different in Washington because Bill Callahan does not know how to tank, and right. Shermer can't win. Count on AD twenty eight carries on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, for sure. They like to run the ball. Have you heard? Um, also, Saquon with a high ankle. I talked about it earlier. He needs to be careful with that. Yep. And the damage is probably already done, but he needs to rehab that thing. He's got a long, great career ahead of him. That can change your ankle flexion forever. And it looks like he's starting to heat up again, breaking up some of that scar tissue. Had over 100 last week. Need to be careful with him. And I really dislike the team in Washington, but three teams at 3-11. and 11, Giants currently top of that pecking order with yep. number two pick. Yep. This game is irrelevant. Yep. Chase Young will be there too. Yep. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. You want to do this QB draft? I, I got about five minutes. Desperately. Let's do it, dude. Okay. So I proposed after uh, Drew Brees' big Monday night, I right. said, if you are in charge of a team for 2020, you can optimize the quarterback situation. Who are you taking first? And of course, I had some questions which were like, okay, so who's your coordinator? And, and I just said, situation, optimize. That's all I need to know. Don't okay. overthink it. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you sound like first take guy right now, but. Are we going to, are we going to snake draft? Yeah, we can snake draft. Okay. I got a one or a two behind my back. You got a two behind your back. That's correct. Would you like the first pick or the second and third? I would like the second and third, please. Damn. Okay. With the first pick in the quarterback draft for 2020. And you got to tell me why and one thing that would worry you depending on the situation. And you've got five minutes? Yeah, I got eight. Um, my first pick is Patrick Mahomes. Nice. Quarterback, Kansas City. A great pick. Uh, concern, uh, right now, I guess you say injury. He's been banged up. Yep. Also small sample size. Not that I don't believe in him. Right. Why, it, why I love it is because Lamar is flavor of the year. Of the year. Um, I think 2020 is classic bounce back for Mahomes. Um, back down to earth a little bit for Lamar, maybe. Maybe so. Maybe, maybe teams figure some things out there. I think Mahomes is... Um, as good a passer. Mahomes is a better passer. Okay. That, I know. I know you can't. It's hard because it's a it's a loaded conversation. If you're going to critique Lamar Jackson, you just better not have like this bad track record of never giving him a shot. That's the thing. Is like I know we talk about Lamar, and some people are like, if you critique him at all, 
there's this loaded component to it, which is the the plight of black quarterbacks in this league and the fact that they had him trying to work out as a wide receiver, this, that, and the third. Listen, I love Lamar Jackson. Um, but it's okay to say that if he didn't have Greg Roman or a stable of tight ends and a run game, it's going to look a little different. Not saying I'm, I'm not going to take him in the top five, which I am, because I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Russell Wilson. At two. At two. Okay. We're going to try to go. Do you need to do something with your head? or No, I'm just the pressure in here. Yeah, it is a lot of pressure during a draft. Yep. Welcome to a war room. We're going to try to go 20 deep, 10 aside, second overall pick. You're going Russ. I like I'm it. I'm going Russ. The thing I like about Russell is that you can plug him in anywhere. And he would have been my first pick maybe. And probably Mahomes would have been my second. Now, Lamar. Is that um, your third pick? Lamar is my third pick. Nice pick. <laughs> Assuming he has Greg Roman. If he has Greg Roman, until Roman maybe gets a head coaching job, which would seem unorthodox, um, I love Lamar. Okay, with the fourth overall pick in the 2020 quarterback draft, I am taking Aaron Rodgers. Wow. Currently of the Green Bay Packers. Right, right, right. I think he Heard remains elite. Doesn't matter the system. It's great. I like... Uh, well, I'm a, I, it's still my pick. Okay. But it's, it's seemingly like... Oh, uh, yeah, because you... It seems like you want me... Yeah, we're doing a snake. Uh, fifth overall pick. I'm going to go to Sean Watson, quarterback, Houston Texans. Great pick. Thank you. I'm going to tell you who I was going to take ahead of Deshaun because Deshaun, I love Deshaun, but, and I would like to see him in solid protection where he can, you know, not get hit. A lot of what he does is extending plays, but Deshaun's got the best wide receiving core in football, maybe. So that's a check mark against. I would go Kyler. I was going to maybe buy a little low on Kyler. Remember when 3,000 yards meant something? I do. How about a rookie throwing for 3,000 yards easily? It's all the market, man. If he was in New York right now, everybody would be talking about him. So um, he's playing with a coach that got the job because the coach wanted Kyler Murray in high school. That's right. essentially what's going on. Yep. And he's been dinged lately when he's, when he's not. I think that's a hamstring too. Yep. When he's running free, dynamic. Yep. You have another pick. Who are you? Did you just take Kyler? Uh, I took Kyler, and after that, I'm going to uh, buy very low on my man Carson Wentz. Shocker. Any commentary there? Or should yeah, we I mean, just refer it, back to every other podcast? Well, I, his, well his rock bottom is 3,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, and um, no, 27 touchdowns, 25 touchdowns, seven, seven interceptions. Listen, the bottom line is you, you, you coach or you, you project quarterbacks based on their ceiling, in my opinion. And what he showed you, I've said it before, if he had Frank Wright right now and a stable of off offensive minds, not just, you know, um, Doug and Grow, and if you still had Flip and, and all those guys, you're going to get more of that guy. And uh, I think this year's rock bottom, I think his ability going forward is next is second to none of, of, some, of some of those quarterbacks uh, from around his class. Again, we're doing quarterbacks who we take 2020 season. My eighth pick, Drew Brees. Yeah. My ninth pick, Dak Prescott. Okay. Okay. Yep. And Dak was probably coming up next. And more Drew. Because the biggest question I have with, with Dak, it's, with Dak, it's, man, I'd like to see him free from Garrett. But then would you want to see him free from all the talent around him? That old line. Yeah. So, um, that running back. And who else did you take after Dak? It was Drew I took, Brees. I took Brees, then, then Dak. So so Drew Brees, I kind of wonder if in 2020 he doesn't hurt his thumb, how his arm is towards the end of the year. I, you know, he's looked great right now. His uh, velocity faded at the end of 19 or at the end of 18. Um, and what would he be like without that security blanket in Peyton? You know, it's like a lot of situations. It's the coach and the quarterback. So yep. um, of, of guys left that I had on my big board, I've still got Cousins, Darnold, Stafford, Carr, and Big Ben. I'm not going to take Carr. He hadn't had a no. He hadn't had a 300 yard passing game all year. Gruden doesn't like him. Um, Big Ben. He's probably really bummed. He's not there for that run right now. It's defense crazy. So I get two picks here. I'm going to go with a healthy Stafford. This okay. guy I really want to succeed. He's kind of the anti-Dak. Everybody hates him. He's got nobody around him. 
Uh, and then I'll take Darnold for the upside, his age and all that. Um, did he have the Gase handcuffs on him? When you hear receivers in Miami talk about it, Gase had really shitty route concepts. And I think when you look at Tannehill leaving Miami, the success he's had, uh, you know, he doesn't have mono this year. <laughs> Pretty solid year. Yeah. You could probably find yourself a co-host who wouldn't like that pick. That co-host is not me. Okay. Like, good. Like that pick a lot. Thanks. Uh, 12th pick. I'm going to go Thomas Edward Brady. Okay. I don't know what number pick I just said. That's 12, 13, Jim Garoppolo. Oh, no. The, the, the way I took it was that we were doing 10 quarterbacks. Do you want to do the second half next pod? That's okay. why you were in such a rush. Well, we were going to do 20, 10 well, aside. Well, I thought 10 aside. That's what we're still doing. Oh, I haven't picked 10? Nah. You sure? Yeah. Let's do the second half another pod. Okay. Because I got to go. I got to pick up my son. Top 10 in the books, five apiece. You want to hear them? Yeah, sure. Let's run them back down. Okay. My stable... Of quarterbacks is Mahomes, Rodgers, Watson, Breeze, Prescott. You're rolling with Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, Carson Wentz, Matt Stafford. And Malone. Yeah, Malone. And coming up, you might be doing Darnold with the first overall pick in the second round of this fascinating quarterback draft. Oh, yeah, I did take Darnold. But that, that we'll say So that. The, the first pick of the second round we'll pick that up next week beautiful hey probably in miami yeah we're going down there for the orange bowl our favorite teams in the orange bowl what, what about yours yeah wahoo wah wahoo wah y'all take care peace peace